call this meeting to order at 602 on April 18th. And I'm excited to get the April meeting underway. In fact, we got folks trickling in, but for now we'll go around and just do um, our roll call. So what we typically do is we'll go around and say our name and our position, whether it's a specific um, role in the EC or the commissioner or um, for example, city liaison. So I'll go on my left. Linda Thompson, liaison. Matt Caldy, commissioner. Maggie Murphy, commissioner. David Parker, Commissioner. Becky Flankowski, Commissioner. Mike Whitman, Commissioner. Gabby Rebels, Commissioner. Uh, Adam Martinez, Commissioner. Helena Hankersley, Commissioner and Secretary. Um, Alana Keeley, Fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Carrie Albright, the Chair. Well, wonderful. Well, welcome to the new folks. Um, it's not officially etched into our agenda, but I would love to just take a quick moment to do a quick introduction. Typically, when we've got uh, new folks come in, we have another new folks. Hi. Are you one of our commissioners? Yes. yes. Come join us at the table. We'll squeeze, so actually, maybe here and there. Okay. Okay. Oh, is that making you, Nadia? Thank you. Yes. All right. Would you just announce yourself real quickly for our roll call? Yes. Uh, Nadia Kane's commission. Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, great. Well, for the new folks, we're really excited to have you. There are three of you who are joining at the exact same time, which is fun because it means we can give you a couple of the intro conversations all at the same time. Um, typically, we would have you just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, whether it's um, kind of what you do here in Bloomington, um, what your you know studies are, your experiences, your interests, anything like that that made joining the EC part of um, part of your plan. And then, if we want, do other commissioners want to introduce themselves as well? Or okay, yeah. great. Well, let's go ahead and start with the new folks, and then we'll go around to give you a really quick idea of who we all are. Sound all right? Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, I'm gonna start with um, Nadia, and then we'll go over to Gabby. Hi, I'm Nadia. Uh, I'm a sophomore at Indiana University studying environmental management, environment and sustainability studies, and astrophysics. Um, and I was really just looking for ways to be involved in community and help the community um, and moving to the environment. And so I found this opportunity um, literally just by looking online. And I'm very honored and happy that I have the opportunity to do this. So. <laughs> Um, my name is Gabby. I'm a graduate student at the ONES School doing an MPA and a Master's of Science in Environmental Science. Um, I'm concentrating in environmental policy and I heard about this commission from Corona um, to go to the same school and it sounded like a really cool way to get involved in the community um, that aligns like kind of with what I'm studying. So. Uh, I'm Adam. I graduated from IU in two years ago now. Uh, I really like Bloomington, so I decided to stay. Uh, for a while now, I've been spending time learning about sort of urban design and ways to plan cities so that they're you know, more sustainable environmentally friendly. And uh, I also really like for so that kind of factors into. Uh, yeah, like the others, I kind of just was looking for a way to help contribute to the community. Well, thanks so much. We're so excited to have you. It's really wonderful um, having new commissioners and get some some fresh ideas, fresh energy, and um, a full commission, which is pretty pretty impressive for the city. Well, great. Okay, well then, let's go around to do a super quick introduction, and Mitchell, you can also do your shout out for roll call if you'd like. We're just giving a brief introduction to our new commissioners, Nadia and Gabby. And Adam. Oh, <laughs> um, Mitchell Owens, commissioner started. Um, about a year ago, if the commissioner played that. Um, I am still a grad student with PhD student at IU. Uh, I've been doing that for a while now. Uh, in the Department of Geography, working with water quality, water policy stuff. Um, and also I uh, work for the ADR Department of Environmental Management, also including policy stuff. Um, but that gets me on that uh, run our program. So, very pretty cool Um, yeah, I think that's about all I got. Uh, hi, I'm Matt Feldy. Um, I'm probably the least qualified guy in the room, but I try really hard. Uh, I've been on the commission since 2017, and I haven't missed a single meeting. Um, I think that makes you more 
but no environmental degree, no environmental job, just um, someone really dedicated to trying to help the community. Nice to meet you. Megan Murphy, um, also into pool loves, much as Mitchell. Um, I teach in ecology at IU and I study evolution, work with insects, um, and teach like research methods in classes. I'm Dave Parker, my doctor is in plant, plant ecology, but I've taught math and statistics in SPEA for about 30 years. Um, I've been on this commission on and off since 1974, a year after, a year or two after it was started. So, and we'll like Mike off and on you know, for various times. So. Um, from Mike Whitman, I can't hear anything. That's what's going on. I'm sorry. No, no. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Dankowski. I'm a master's student at Indiana, uh, specifically SPIA slash O'Neill, and I'm doing my master's in my specific concentration of energy and climate change. And I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan, so really enjoying being involved in the community. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a uh, fishery biologist, and I am retired from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I was just kind of a jack of all trades. Oh yeah, um, I'm Rebecca Renna. Um, I am a master's student in public affairs and environmental science at SPIA, among other things. <laughs> Would you interested? Yeah, go for it. No, okay. I'm Alana. I'm also a, a master's student at SPIA, studying environmental policy and sustainability. And you see it's awesome. So I'm flying here. <laughs> um, and I'm Carrie. It's great to have the three of you join the commission. I'm really excited about it. Um, I work for a nonprofit, the North American Association for Environmental Education. So basically a sort of a, a global network that connects um, educators for early childhood, K through 12, um, higher ed, and people that do like non-formal education, like interpreters and stuff like that, connect them to each other, to funding, to opportunities and stuff like that. So that's been my interest. And I went to SPIA um, back in the day um, doing uh, environmental policy, natural resource management, and policy analysis. And I was on the EC a long time ago and I took a break. Now I'm back and I'm super excited to go. All right, Linda, last night. Uh, Linda Thompson, uh, I am the um, city uh, lays onto the Environmental Commission and basically the Environmental the Environmental Commission's coordinator. Um, uh, my title, Senior Environmental Planner. Um, I've been here. Uh, I just hit my 20 year mark uh, recently. Um, and um, I did not go to SPIA. I got my degree from IU in geology. Thanks. So as you can see, we're from all different backgrounds. There are folks who've been here for a really long time, who have incredible institutional knowledge, and then there's folks who are newer and ready to really dig into how we can support the community. And then some of us in between who've been here for a while and are also still very excited about it. So yeah, it's great to have you. <laughs> all right, well, as we're going through tonight's meeting, if you have any questions about things, we have a lot of like acronyms, we reference things like reports or committees, if any that sounds a little confusing, Feel free to raise your hand or ask because um, there's a lot to know, a lot to learn, and clearly there's a table full of folks with all sorts of experience that can help break it down. Okay, well, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and go to the approval of the March minutes. So Prenna sent those around, and I believe um, folks had a chance to submit any of their um, edits to it. I don't know if you've got anything. To I did not about. receive any feedback, so it has not been edited. Also, I did not get a chance to send it to only <laughs> I'm assuming they would abstain. I would, I would assume so as well. So we can consider a vote, and then if we're not able to get um, to get our quorum because of because of that, then we can um, uh, reconsider for next month. I move to approve March minutes. Okay. A second. Oh, wonderful. So this point we go around and we say vote to approve yes, um, vote to uh, not approve no, or abstain. So I'll start with Nadia because Linda does not vote. <laughs> I'd say uh, yes. 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 Excellent. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, the March minutes passed. Thank you, Krenna, for taking those. I know it was a big conversation, so it's good to have um, um, some record of that. All right.
right, great. Well, moving along, we're item number four on the agenda already, which is our opportunity for public comment. We have all sorts of folks here coming <laughs> yeah. in. So eager to have you in, introducing yourself. And then if we have anybody online, we can check in with them after that. Also, hey guys, love to see a full room. Uh, my name is Matthew Austin. I'm on the Cause Commission on uh, Commission on Sustainability. I'm also the chair of the CAC. Uh, so the advisory commission a committee which works with the uh, um, waste reduction district um and i want to make you all aware of an organic waste task force we're currently working with uh, some of the county commissioners to figure out some of the issues that are happening with uh, the city and with earth keepers shutting down my reasoning for being here today not just to watch the meeting is to support my sister nonprofit. she's going to speak or we have an urban uh, we do urban ag we have an urban farm about 1.6 acres at the corner near the corner of Covenant and High Street, near the Kroger by the mall, where we produce five, six thousand pounds of organic fruits and veggies. And we do a lot of urban ag education. So with that being said, we're running up against some things in the UDO that are causing issues. And as you probably know, there's a sustainability action plan and a climate action plan. And so we're making those that care about these things aware that there are currently a lot of roadblocks in the UDO that the that will prevent the city and residents from working on the climate action plan and the sustainability action. So with that being said, here's my sister, yes. Ellie Spear. Hi. I love that there's tons of you guys in the room. I only brought eight copies of uh, of the climate action plan, but this is not the whole entire climate action plan. What we've done is we've gone through and what I'm here to ask you for your support today is what is highlighted. Um, this is a part of the climate action plan. And what it says is that uh, part of the climate action plan is to work on revising zoning ordinances to encourage urban agriculture. And so that's what I'm really looking for you today is uh, transportation and planning is they love that I, I go to them and they say, I love what you're doing. Uh, here's, here's another one. So, I love what you're doing. This is great. However, we have to follow the rules. And based on the rules, um, we cannot agree, we, we want to support you, but we cannot agree to this because they are the rule followers. So they said, go to the different commissions, go to city council and see if we can um, request a variance first or even the bigger picture for not just uh, my nonprofit, which is the K through 12 STEM based, trying to teach uh, kids how to do all these kinds of things outside of the classroom. but. Um, not, it's not just for us. We want to be a template for other urban farms in the city. And right. And so there's the, the plan, there's even an urban ag task force, a big uh, form as we speak to work with these things. But we're just running up against so many roadblocks and it's yeah. very frustrating. And currently, if you look at the sustainability action plan and the climate action plan, they're actually the city's far behind the goals of hitting, uh, re reducing. Uh, carbon by 30 percent by 2030. So the city hasn't even done has basically done very little when it comes to supporting this type of thing. Yeah. So everything on here, what I've done is I'm asking for your support with the one that's highlighted to either I'm going to go for a variance because it takes time to get things through city council. I understand that, but you know, bigger picture for the commission is how can we potentially get these. Uh, the zoning barriers revised so that all the other things can uh, urban farms can move forward with. And what I've identified on here are the things that I I am ready to go. Like I want to I want to uh, to work on the specific climate action plans. I know I can do it. I already have pilot programs going, different initiatives, but I'm being told no, I can't expand them or I can't do this or that because of the zoning barrier. So what are you looking for from these? I'm looking for a, um, once I'm going to, what I'd like to do is don't just take my word for it. I'd like to send you all 
um, you know, my background of the nonprofit, my farm, the grants that I've been awarded from IDEM, the grants that I've been awarded from the city, from Bloomington yes. Garden Club, from Archer. I'd like to show you that I'm not just a fly by night, what I've done at Child's Wonder Lab, and that, you know, my what my intentions are. And uh, then you guys can look at what I've done, and then I would love a letter of support um, or talking to, you know, talking to city council, what something so that we can move forward and either get a variance or how can we look at the bigger, bigger pitch, picture for all people who want to do urban gardening, urban farming, urban education um, in the city. Um, so that's what, that's what I'm asking for. Great. Yeah, that's, I have a question. Um, what kind of impediments are you finding? So um, the the things that I'm finding is the education. So there's the home occupation rules for within the UDO. And in a residential area, home occupation has to be anything that's identified as a home occupation has to be within four walls of a person's home. So currently she does outdoor education. We have high school students, we have uh, interns from IU, we have an intern from South, and that part is fine. We've got verbal okay for that. But she wants to take them indoors because we have, if we grow up indoors, we have technology. Um, the, the, and so the city's not letting us do the indoor and outdoor stuff. Oh, okay. and yeah. like, this, is, this is all in the climate action plan mm -hmm. and the sustainability action plan. But once again, the city says no because the UDO. Right, but it doesn't have anything to do with growing. No. It's the teaching. It's the teaching people, as we all, as a lot of you know, with the climate change, there's a lot of things that need to, in Bloomington, zone 6B, that need to be started indoors. And people are scared to, people don't, people want to learn. And if you just say, we'll grow it indoors, they go, how do I do this? So part of what I'm wanting to do is teach from seed to table, not just from farm to table. What about animals? Animal? Are you trying to raise any animals? What, what do you mean? Are you trying to raise um, like, like chickens? Uh, we have chickens, and one of my goals with bee calls is to increase the amount of flock size yes, yes. based on property size. <laughs> or anything or we so we I actually teach students how to raise chickens so that they're they could actually be used at a school to teach them how to be docile and you can pick them up and you can train them so when the fox is coming or the hawk um, that are in our neighborhood they will listen to you so that's one thing I do we also have bees Okay. Um, and that is also allowed by the USDA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we have honey. We actually have three different kinds of bees that I teach about. We have mason bees, we have cutter bees, and honey bees. Mm -hmm. And so that's another initiative. I'm actually getting students out to not be scared of our bugs and, <laughs> and our pollinators. Is registered. Yes. yes, we are registered. And I went through with the city of Bloomington. We got our soil tents. I've gone through and been vetted as a farm in. I've done everything that the UDO has asked me. And we also had item come down because so we do a lot of different kinds of educational composting initiatives. Um, and I teach about that as well. And we had item come down and make sure that we were doing it according to residential yeah. state standards. And we've also had soil and water district out, the farm agency. Like, so we we tried to do everything we can do. So um, in the winter, you also want to continue to educate, and that's why you need the DBO prints. Right. We want to show that growing is not just three seasons, it's four seasons. Um, and we have built an addition to our that was approved by the you know, Monroe County Building Council we, uh, Commission. We, we built on a attached what conservatory that will be my teaching space, um, hopefully my teaching space, so that we can do it 365 days a year. But right now, you can't bring them upstairs. Yeah. Sorry, this is, if you would like to know who this is, what is my mother? Yeah. It's a family affair. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so all I want to do is support the climate action plan. I want to, I see all these initiatives that have to be done by 2030, and I want to, I want to motivate people. I want to say that it can be done, that we can have procurement, uh, we can have processing, small processing centers, we can have hubs and neighborhoods, we can do workshops, we can educate based on, you know, our individual neighborhoods and help one another. That's, that's all I want to do. So, so thank you for sharing. This is all that's really exciting stuff. So I'm glad to hear that, that this is something that you've been working on. And I think we all would love to, yeah, get your website, get out just anything mm -hmm. you want to share with us, just to kind of yeah. get into a little bit more. Just yeah. as a note, um, the UDO is something that we have historically weighed in on as far as its edits, its updates, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that that would be something that my assumption is that one of the options would be us writing that recommendation that UDO incorporate language that would allow for that four season um, programming. Um if it would that and then secondly the um the with the, the variants I assume it would be that that direction would be just language of support in some somewhere yeah. or another than a letter from us would definitely help on a variant. Yeah. So okay so those are kind of like and a variance would help on getting a change in the UDO. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Um, thank you for that. Yeah. So those yeah. are those are kind of like the two like action items that we would be capable of doing that would have some sort of influence um to go forward with that. Do you both have more questions? And actually would you mind spelling your name? I'm sorry. Yeah my name is it's Ellie and it's E L L E E. Yeah. Sphere. It's Sphere. Um, S P I E R. Since you yes. don't have enough copies of this, could you send us a link? Yeah, I will send that as an attachment and yeah, I'll go through my whole history and review what I'm, you know, what I'm trying to, what we're trying to do. Okay. Do you have, um, I guess, would you cite to the environment? Yeah, the in, uh, just environment at Bloomington has a, 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 an, a, a, an address, an email address, and then also everyone. Then you'll send it to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. What was he? Matthew Austin. Austin. Okay. Okay. Matthew Austin, like Austin, Texas. Okay. Um, are, are there other questions for Matthew or Ellie about? What they're asking, what they're talking about as far as their programs and um, their goals with everything. We just last month we were talking about the climate action plan and where the EC can be more vocal and, and support and weigh in and things like that. And next month we'll have, in two months, we'll have um, Sean Mai come and speak with us about um, how that implementation. So this is next time. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you guys have, after I send stuff, if you have any questions, okay. clarification, if you want to come out and actually see what we're doing. Yeah. Please, please, we'll we'll show you what we're what we're all about. I mean, I have I have an O'Neill student that's interning right now, and she's she's helping with a lot of recycling and <laughs> yeah, come come see. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions or or input for these folks who have done them? It's a great cause, and I think it's. Good that the UDO is now amended more often than it used to be. So it's something that someone could do something about soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when you get the city council involvement. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Thanks yeah. for the work that you're doing. Um, we're trying. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. Um, okay. Well, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, we cleared out the room to talk. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, is there anybody on Zoom that we should give up to? No. Nope. Uh, just family now. That's the new. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Well, great. Um, well, it sounds like we'll be getting some stuff to look through. So please make sure that when Linda sends that around, you take a deep look and. Think through. We would we would likely vote on this. So we talk about it a little bit next meeting or or the next meeting um, after we get the materials and then decide if it's something we want to bring to council. Um, share plan commission speak as a commission about or as individuals, which you're all welcome to do. Cool. Well, we've moved along and now it's old business. So there's a lot of little checkpoints and I have a lot of names written next to a bunch of them. So. I'm gonna go ahead and pass to Alon for Eco Heroes. Awesome. So uh judging concluded on Tuesday. So thank you to people who judged. Um Gary just signed our winners. Uh, we had a total of like 60 entries at the last second. So that was good. Yeah. Lots of art to look at for the judges. So um 
yeah, now we have the event, not tomorrow, but we're planning our gift bags tomorrow, uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. at Switchyard Park. Um, I'll be there, Linda will be there, Carrie will be there, and you're all invited to be there. Um, it'll last about 30-ish minutes, probably. Probably. Well, then the event goes till the five, till but, five. but the equal heroes will be about eight. Yeah. We're at the beginning of the event. Yes. One. We get to yeah. kick off the event Track with our right. cheery faces. Mm -hmm. um, am I missing on anything else? Planning wise? We have a photographer set up. Christy Lindbergh will be for that. Oh, that's great. So, um, yeah, if you guys want to come on out and see all the fun kids, they're all excited to shake the mayor's hand oh, and cute. win a prize. So, <gasps> yeah. Okay. And we have how many sponsors do we have for this? We had 20. 20 sponsors. Yeah, 20. A total of, I just retabulated like $2,160. Cool. The That's amazing. amazing. That's very generous of our community. Anything else we could address? I don't believe so. All right. Great, great. Um, it's just last big hurrah for a yeah for BC and Peter had a great work to a mama. Oh, yeah, it sounds like it's getting like that many entries, that many donations. <laughs> she has done everything. That is awesome. I'm so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a learning process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, the next item on the list, I have is a talking point for you as well. If if that's a good fit, but it's for the Grandview STEM night um thing for the twenty fifth. Yeah, so Grandview is hosting a STEM night, and um, we all agreed last time that EC would do a table. And right now, I think it's me, Carrie, and then possibly Corona. You come in for sure. Um, we're going to be doing, um, Matt had an idea of having a computer there so people could actually do the habitat activity plan in, in real time in front of us so we can help them guide through the steps on how to do that. Um, and I've asked for tables, chairs, electrical outlets, and they'll be providing that. Um, we're also going to probably bring other brochures related to EC's work and stuff. So I think it'll be a really good opportunity to kind of talk about what EC's been up to. So if you guys have any other ideas of what we could bring with us, just let me know or Carrie know, and then I'll just compile that. So what are the times of the event again? Yeah, so the event is at 6 to 730. We will be getting there sometime between 430 and 545. Mm -hmm. So and there's also a free taco bar if you also want to join as a table. So very enticing. But yeah, that's cool. I'm very excited for that. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm trying to think of whatever other creative things we've got, but I think we have a lot on our on our horizon and all of our own projects and stuff. So I'm I, I will attend if it rains. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. I need knocking doors. If it so rains, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm conditional on the weather. If it's <laughs> terrible outside, I will be there. <laughs> While we're watching the skies. Okay, I'll go through it. We never wish for rain. Okay, well, thanks for the update on that. I'm excited to have that happen. Excited to engage with some Grandview kiddos and their families. All right, I can see on the agenda of old business is ECPC update. So Linda, I see that's going to come from you. Yes, it is. And um, I really don't have one. <laughs> um, 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 there may be an update to ECPC coming along because with the new direct, we have a new director in planning and transportation and um, the new director and my manager are thinking about maybe moving my position back where it used to be. Um, and so none of that has been decided yet. I was hoping by tonight I would have something to say, but uh, as it turns out, I really don't. But um, I, um, you know, back them on that idea. Nothing, nothing new on the secondary development or anything? No, nothing. I, I don't know what happened last night. Yeah, check last night. As, yeah. At the council meeting, I, I didn't watch it yet. I didn't hear about it. It, it came up, I understand, but I, I don't know whether they approved anything. Or yeah, they, I mean, I thought they were supposed to be. This is, yeah, going to be like a deep discussion. I thought the uh, previous one was like the first hearing. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a big discussion, but I haven't I haven't heard it, and CAPS is usually a day behind or so. Mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah. so, anyway, my update is that I have no update. <laughs> Well, thank you for the non-update. Um, the the subway development, I think, is one that we should keep on our radar. I think that Linda forwarded the letter that we got of the folks who are expressing concerns about the 
the developments and all of the company. And I don't know if the three of you received that. It was oh, a, a okay. letter, maybe a couple pages long. Right. We can forward it to you. But it's basically expressing some of the concerns that the issues talked about as far as like what's happening with the cars and runoff and everything that it's in that area where mm -hmm. there are a lot of residents who are concerned about that as well as just the general environment. Oh. Impacts right. of developing out there. And they wrote a really uh, good long letter, but there have been other letters I think that you'll find in the council packet. Mm -hmm. If you look at the packet, mm -hmm. which is on the website under the council mm -hmm. documents. Okay. Oh, great. Um, as a side note, the ECPC, do you want to explain what that is for folks oh, who may be yeah. interested in being part of that? ECPC stands for um, Environment, Environmental Commission Planning Committee. We call them working groups now, but ECPC was too fun to, to say to, to change. <laughs> um, and what they, they don't do much of anything right now, um, which is kind of a long story, but I used to um, review development petitions and then for their environmental uh, qualities. And then I would bring that to the ECPC and describe the, the, the site and the case and what they were asking. And we would all make recommendations on things to make it better environmentally. I would write the memo for them, and and that would go to the plan commission. And um, the last director that was here uh, decided to stop that. So um, the ECPC has been mostly disbanded for the last couple of years. But there's a great big case now. It's like 140 acres on the south side of town. And uh, it's got all kind of um, environmental um, um, features on it. So the ECPC got involved with that again, and we, we wrote a memo to the planning commission on that. And we're just kind of waiting for some feedback now. Um, and there'll, there'll be time for more because this is like the first step in their development. This is the uh, like the pre preliminary plan of the whole big thing, so it doesn't it's doesn't get down to site plan specifics, but um, it has you know it will include uh, like where uh, how much and where um, uh, conservancy easements will be and where uh, riparian buffers will be and things of that nature. So it's um, it's really important. Um, it's gone to the plan commission already, and they sent it to the city council with a positive recommendation. So now it's with the city council. Uh, has there been any response on our recommendation for subsurface karst analysis? Yes, <clears throat> they have. Uh, oh, I'm so glad you asked that. Um, so that, that thing you said around mm -hmm. neighbors. <laughs> right. They, um, yeah, the neighbors knew of a sinkhole that the developers hadn't identified. Um, and so they did, they did do a harsh um, study and they have a report, but I haven't read it yet. I just got it yesterday, actually. So I haven't read it yet, but um, um, yeah, I don't know what it says yet. The developer came to much of the because mm -hmm. and spoke, so you want to watch that. Oh, okay, great. Great. I'm sure they probably said a lot of the same things that they said at ours. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, fairly sensitive, I'd say. Right, because, yeah, and, you know, if you really look at the, um, uh, their um, ordinance, their development ordinance, um, you know, I mean, you might scratch your head with a couple of things, but um, yeah. Um, well, thanks for the update on that. The I'll make sure that we forward the the letter to you, and then maybe we can forward some of the documents that you shared with us a while back to the mm -hmm. new folks that they found because obviously this is going to be an ongoing conversation for at least a bit longer. Yeah, a bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the ECPC is one of our working groups, which means if you're interested in being part of it, then you can just raise your hand either um, at the end when we're just doing our announcement, or you can email the group and say, hey, I'm interested, and let us know. It's not a huge formal commitment, but it is um, an opportunity for you to get more involved in some of the, the more hands-on things that our mission does. And yeah, I feel like the, the olden days would be great to, to get back to that where you kind of really sit down and work through the proposals mm -hmm. going on. Great. Well, thanks for turning the non-update into a update update. <laughs>
All right. Um, so, oh, so discussion specific questions regarding the climate action plan for July and June. So last month, um, we sort of looked at the climate action plan and started mapping out what areas would make sense for us to dig into a little bit deeper so that we could um, give some questions to Sean when she comes in uh, June to really say, to, to make sure that we are understanding kind of either what our role can be or how they're actually enacting some of these recommendations that they have or plans that they have. Um, so we kind of talked through that a little bit. And so this is basically a opportunity for us to discuss or to share any of the things that have arisen for us as we've dug into those. And on the off chance that people haven't taken the opportunity to look into the specific areas we outlined in March, then we can wrap this one and just make sure that we do it by next evening. So I want to open the, the table up for folks who would want to potentially share thoughts they have, questions they have on any of the climate action plan exploration they've done so far. No. Um, and also, they've been through the, uh, the climate action plan hub, the dashboard. It is up. It's running. It's chock a block full of things so make sure to check that out and new folks i'm not sure if we included you on that so we'll make sure to forward that to you i mean it's on it's on the website but we can include it in our list of items to make sure that you've got i think that would be for many people did you i think i remember saying that. okay and i think i can't remember who it was one of one of those who had a typo in their name may not received it so oh yeah i think it was that was not him i first made a typo and then I fixed it and still couldn't send things to her. Another typo. <laughs> <laughs> I keep looking yeah, and looking, okay. but you know, I clearly I had to do something wrong because I couldn't send it, but I wound up getting it to her another way. <laughs> um, and in our March minutes, which we will share with you as well, um, we we talked through what topics to, to dig into a little bit more. So if anybody has those off the top of their head, they can share them, but otherwise we'll just forward them to you and you can look into it and it's a, it's a lot to absorb so give yourself plenty of time to look through it it's a lot to um kind of unpack but i think there's a quite a few areas that we could weigh in the sections were two three five and eight ah thank you okay. yeah. thank you secretary <laughs> okay okay again um the idea is that we're going to get these questions to Sean in advance, so be ready next meeting. Be ready to do this. I'm going to call on each of you like a third grade class to commit, <laughs> but we'll love to hear everyone's thoughts. Okay, new business. Here we are moving along. City Council questions from the annual report. Okay, so last month we shared our, or I shared our annual report uh, with the City Council, which was an exhilarating experience. And um, they had just a couple of questions. So I wanted to share those with you all. Actually, I think I emailed them to myself. Um, make sure I had them on top of the list. But basically the questions were really about the um, Habitat Connectivity Plan. So there were two from. Um, one came from Dave Rallo, who is involved in a lot of different uh, committees and commission. Um, and his were specifically about how we, and you, we don't have to necessarily answer these right at the moment, but just want to share this, share this with you really quickly. Um, they were about um, the, how, how we consider the urban deer population when we are promoting connecting wildlife corridors, connecting habitats, improving the, the green space connectivity through this plan. So his, his question was kind of a, more just a consider it, consider how, what we would refer to for resources beyond just deer resistant plants, but um, some of the deer population like task force, or I can't remember what it is that's the kind of um, uh, retired now, but basically like deer population management techniques um, and how we think about that in, in connection with the activity plan. So that's one item um, that we can talk about tonight. We can leave it to the biodiversity working group if they'd like to talk about it, but it's out there to share. And the other piece is from um, Hobie Strasburg. Strasburg? Strasburg? Strasburg. Um, just with um, looking for a little bit of uh, help with using the Habitat Connectivity Plan. So there's a tool, an interactive tool online that gives you the chance to this big map. And there are all sorts of things that have been built into the map to show green space, to show um, areas that we would like to have more uh, use of like native plants, natural landscaping, things like that. 
but she was basically just expressing that as a user, first time user of this um, tool, she's had a lot of questions of not being able to tell what is this color versus that color, what is the shading of this, um, being in it, trying to use it, and then having to go to an outside document to look, look into it, or not having that information mapped out. So thinking about what kind of um, legend can we improve on the tool itself, and also, um, one of the things that she said that I thought was really, really interesting, she said, you know, I'm in the, one of the zones that you're saying is missing that, that connection. Um, what do I do? And not just go back to the brochure and go back to the link, but like, is there a way in, in this tool to have something pop up that's like, if you're in this area, go to these links or, you know, something that kind of moves you while you're in the tool through to resources of what you can do as a citizen so that you can put yourself on the map and say, yes, this is what I'm doing. Um, right now it's kind of a fill it in as you go, which I mean the functionality of it is great. I'm super excited for us to keep kind of nurturing how it works. But that was one of the questions is if I want to do something, I'm not quite sure where to look without having to leave this thing and go find the other thing somewhere and then come back around. So that might be something that we consider how to just improve the usability a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind if I don't get it? Just yeah, of course, oh, of course, of course, please do. Yeah. Um like just because um so the biodiversity working group did touch on the second question. Um, we definitely did not touch on the deer management problem, and it feels like it's with like outside of the scope of what we're looking to do, but we can consider it in a future biodiversity working group meeting. Um, so I don't really have the answer to the deer problem. Um, the issues with the usability of the habitat connectivity plan and the user interface was something I also noticed about this plan when I started looking into it and diving into it. So um, like one of our uh, considerations and like tasks for ourselves is potentially like auditing the habitat connectivity plan to find ways that we can improve it, update it, um, make it more user friendly, that kind of thing. But we're not super far along into that. Uh, we all have a task to dig into it more ourselves before our next biodiversity working group meeting. Uh, yes. One possible suggestion for making it more user friendly or intuitive or anything like that. It's the thing every environmental agency is doing right now, but for us making it a story map basically mm -hmm. um, is potentially like that requires ARC to some degree, like mm -hmm. having as Esri access. Uh, but it would be a very <laughs> useful and very uh, user friendly, mm -hmm. but if we can do something like that, um, that is a really good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've used, I've made story maps before, so that is definitely something that I think we could actually know, do. But I know EPA was trying to tell us to like turn it. The hurdle would be that it was created through Google Maps by a previous intern, mm -hmm. um, and in order to substantially change it. We probably have to restart. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, because I thought about that before, the the GIS overlay isn't particularly precise. Um, some of the stuff, if you're not sure what you're looking at, you don't know what areas are important. Um, however, to to fix it is to redo it. Mm -hmm. um, which I'm I'm not saying shouldn't be done. I'm, I'm just trying to highlight that that's. Mm -hmm. um, a, a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping there's a way that could be done where we save what data we have so we could easily put the points on a new one, but uh, it's just a Google Maps overlay mm -hmm. with areas literally circled in yellow. Um, yeah. 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 I think that, I, I mean, it sounds like ultimately using our GIS would be a helpful way to go about it and just figuring out how much are we going to have to do from scratch versus how much can we export in some way or another mm -hmm. um, to reapply to a new version of it. What's interesting is, so at the, the conversations of Grand Eagles um, STEM night to, to emphasize using the map and interacting with it. If you haven't seen it, it's on the Environmental Commission's um, webpage. There's a whole link to the, the tool and also some supporting literature, but um, the goal will be to really emphasize that at Grandview. I feel like that might be sort of a little bit of like user experience exploration exercise where, you know, we're working through with people and what they share back with us might actually help us help inform what families, kids, other educators might, might 
find challenging or find really easy, depending on how how much they've used um, tools similar to this. So I might be keen to hear from folks what they think, but um, cool. Well, I, I really appreciate y'all considering what it might take to make this a little bit more user friendly. Because it's it's so cool. I'm so excited about it, but I know that if you're not super versed in it, it is a little um, intimidating, maybe a little confusing. Right, just the Habitat Connectivity Plan and the Interactive Map are really kind of separate entities, yeah. like to, to OP's inquiry, what everyone can do is exactly the same. They can remove invasives on their property, they can plant and take good care of natives on their property, and then the map is just you marking where you are and what you did. So yeah. whether you're inside one of those areas that's marked as a higher priority or not, you do the same thing. You mark your place, and you, you know the useful thing you did, the fight, fragmentation of habitat, which to Dave Rollo's point, um, your, your aim is to help pollinators and birds and things you love instead of deer. Deer will benefit from this, and I can understand a concern as to if you're creating corridors within a city where there are roads um, and the deer now go through these corridors and more, they cause more car accidents. Like, I can understand a place of, of concern, but we're trying to help all. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of, that was pretty much the, the only thing I had back to say, which was, this is, I mean, I understand that deer are going to be a, one of the species that benefits from, you know, more, more green space, more connection, all of that. Um, but it's also about pollinators and about birds and about small yeah. mammals, like native mammals the, and things like that. The city deer have been a problem for a really long time and you no know, previous action has managed to do anything about that. So I, I, would be he hesitant to uh, entangle it at all with the habitat connectivity plan because we're just trying to do the, the biggest net positive we can for an ecosystem and deer control is unrelated and I well it's not hardly fake I like it's not my favorite it's deer eat a lot of plants that are native mm -hmm. and they are uh, uh, sort of anti our plant in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, they've made it considerably harder for me personally to find native plants. Well, and I understand how they're they designated Griffith Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that to 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 both of your points, that Dave's suggestion wasn't necessarily how will we manage the deer population because that's very much outside of what yeah. we are um, I think tasked with doing and interested in doing, but but I think knowing that that the public, as we're talking about this, as we're talking about the different the different areas of our biodiversity working group, that the public may say, I want to do that because I don't want to encourage, like, I want to have stones and gravel and slabs of concrete and things that will not attract deer because I cannot have deer in my property or my neighborhood, whatever it is, understanding that a member of the public may come to this, this uh, tool or, or plan that we're, we're offering and say, I don't want this one piece of it. What do we at the EC do to either pull those concerns or be able to say, you know, here are a couple of tips or say, we understand that's your choice. And you know, I have a question about the urban deer management. So I work with the Department of Natural Resources specifically in the, their deer hotline program, <laughs> which is really funny, but it's like where people call if they have a question about deer. Um, and a lot of times, like you can boil it down to just like um, not like, no, but like what you should do. And so I was wondering um, if the city of Wilmington has any educational material on how you should like personally um, go about your like deer management in your front yard, for example. Um, because I think that even like a small degree of education could help. Not that I know of. I mean, yeah, I think. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it. They do, yeah. You can report deer on you report um, specifically if you believe that they're being fed nearby, um, since that's against the rules. But even that, um, I did not find the follow up satisfactory. Um, do you know if, if it's if part of what people call your hotline for is like deer removal from their property? Like there's a deer in my backyard, can you get rid of it? Or is it more? How do I keep the deer from coming, or how do I scare the deer away appropriately, or whatever? It's it's kind of a mix. I would say the removal is like probably on the lower, and the, the quantitative 
it is a lot of hunters i'll be honest um and then it's stuff like i found a fawn what do i do with it because mm -hmm. that happens in the city too mm -hmm. um and you, you leave it because it's not alone um typically um so i don't know it's it's definitely more of the hunters and the dude you might find out of the city mm -hmm. but i think even if people in the city knew that that was available as a resource like even that could help so I'm going to jump in just one, uh, one more time. Um, so one of the other things the biodiversity working group has talked about doing as like an action item for ourselves, and I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but because we have one meeting, but um, collecting resources and centralizing them, um, both internal and external resources from the city and outside of the city in terms of um, like, like basically a centralized hub of like, Okay, I don't know where to start. Here's a bunch of resources that you can look through if you're if you have questions about like native plants, what's native here. If you um, don't know like how to make pollinator habitat, we could consider also adding in resources that have to do with that. And the big question is, I assume you mean digitized resources? Yeah, <laughs> I think that that's I think that's a. a um, a 2024 appropriate recommendation for sure, <laughs> to do that. And I think, so the biodiversity working group, obviously we've been talking about that a lot. It clearly encompasses a ton of what we're passionate about, what we've done in the past, what we're trying to do right now. And in our, we have a bucket list meeting in January, which is where we all come with ideas of what we want to do the next year. And then we talk about it, we discuss what it could look like, and then ultimately we vote on which things we want to prioritize. And the biodiversity working group was a big one um, to continue with what we have done, but then also break into additional um, channels of what we can do as far as bees and pollinators and things like that. It sounds like the, and you're welcome to join that. Karina has fearlessly been leading the way on that. Um, it, I mean, it sounds like we may have subgroups within the biodiversity working group just because there are so many directions it could go over time. The habitat connectivity plan is a really important one, but it also seems like there could be way more as well. Yeah, um, we are definitely still in the process of organizing ourselves. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. I, yeah. I love it. And if I can uh, add one more thing, uh, and the city now allows deer diseases that are tall to, to keep them out. They never used to do that. So yeah. one way you can keep them out of your are to set up and put them out. So they're now they can jump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They can jump. A ten foot fence, and they jump with the eight foot fence into my garden. So there's definitely a lot of management strategies that I think you could like make people aware of. Like, yeah. planting crops, or I guess just plants in your front yard for the deer, actually, to divert them away from the ones you actually care about. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. It's just mm -hmm. interesting. Attrition, yeah. attrition thing is expensive too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Best um, way to get rid of the deer is to have your Neighbors get loud dogs. Which <laughs> 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 well, you may not like. <laughs> but I think our only relevant resource right now is a handout that is deer resistant native plants. Yes. And it's always the first one to disappear yeah. at any point. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that that's, I think that what you shared, Nadia, and, and to your point, Megan, I think that that's maybe when we talk about our resources and what we have to hand out to folks and talk about the habitat connectivity plan to new people. Having that list of here are a couple of major, you know, civilian-based uh, deer management strategies of fencing, of planting in this way, of you know, what can you do to ensure if you're composting, like thinking about where what you're doing to keep critters out of that or whatever, like just various directions that we can guide people and maybe eventually make a resource, you know, a handler. Did anybody mention the deer task force? I don't. I didn't catch everything. Yeah. So. Uh, I think well, that several years ago there was a, a city commission of deer task force of experts to study the problem mm -hmm. uh, locally, and uh, they produced a long report, which is probably still available mm -hmm. somewhere on the city website. That's a good idea. Yeah, I knew that it was um, sort of that that task force was sunset, but I hadn't thought about trying to grab that report and have that as a resource too. Mm -hmm. This is fairly niche, but I just thought of it, so I might as well share it. Um, the very first case of CWD in deer was just uh, reported up north in northern Indiana. Um, so there is a potential that over the next year, I suppose, that that kind of makes its way down. So I can say CWD? Yes, uh, chronic wasting disease. Say again? Chronic wasting disease. Oh, wow. Okay. But of course, they carry ticks that are nasty to people. So. 
Resistant plants is sort of a misnomer anyway. It just means when they're grazed, they won't die. <laughs> they will still eat all of your deer resistant plants. <laughs> just thought people should know. It's that the plant is resistant, not that the deer right. <laughs> keep coming back and being eaten again. Um, resilient. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah I just, I, I guess I, I still want to kind of hammer the, the deer point in that I, I know that we have an urban deer problem and I wish there was something that someone could do about it. Surely it won't be the EC, but I, and I, I don't know the council member's intent, but I, I just kind of fear when I hear these issues put together that someone saying that maybe connecting these habitats will bring more deer. And I don't want any connecting of the habitats to be cast in a negative light mm -hmm. um, because it's it's about the entire ecosystem that yes, mm -hmm. unfortunately the deer will also benefit from. But I, I think we need a, a separate deer management plan and have that not be laid at the feet of anyone who's trying to strengthen the local ecosystem. Yeah, I fully totally agree with that. Um, it's funny because I know that Dave sent the I think it was the Iraq minutes, and within those there was conversation about deer population, and Dave was weighing in on that as well. So it makes me I my assumption is it's kind of top of mind as as far as a concern that folks might have, but. Yeah, Matt, I would say that a big piece of it is obviously we're our goal is not to encourage deer uh core, deer specific corridors, but really a larger shift in how we think about our our uh, um land and green spaces and, and well, I, I can speak from personal yeah. experience that deer do not need wooded corridors in the street now. So <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the deer are like, give me sidewalks, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, Great. Um, anyway, those are those are the uh, the main things that I heard back from the council when I shared about what we we're up to. Um, Isaka Sari asked if we needed anything from them, and I basically the main thing I said was, please hear us when we bring you memos about things. Please hear us when we ask you to consider things. Um, you know, talking about how we're supporting the climate action plan, what is needed to do that effectively. So that was really my main ask, and um, you know, it may it may. Be worthwhile to invite them to one of our meetings down the road if there's anything we really want them to hear, especially because we're putting together like a water quality working group or a water quality report. Um, and maybe something that we want to have some of their uh, uninterrupted attention to share. So, okay, okay, okay. So, that was the main thing. I know that we are at now at item seven and it's already 659, which means, Dave, I'm going to hand you the microphone to tell us about the tree commission meeting and we can go from there. All right, the Tree Commission meets, we, we meet the third Thursday, they meet the third Monday, which sometimes precedes and sometimes follows our meeting. But uh, we met this following month, this, this preceding Monday. Tree Commissions usually start with uh, the Urban Foresters Report, uh, Haskell Smith, and um, I won't go through the whole thing, but he talked about calorie pair removals. We're still trying to get rid of calorie pairs in various parts of the city, and this was in Gentry Honors and Gentry East. Um, he talked about, um, oh, there's a big power line uh, tree removal place uh, that, that that Duke is doing, I'm not quite sure where that is, but um, they're cutting down a whole lot of trees that are, that actually they've done it because not that they were getting in the way of the power lines, but they, they were just getting in the way of the trucks that Duke need, needed to move around. And so um, they're now replacing those trees, um, not necessarily right in the same area. And then, there are three semi truck loads of trees coming in, and two of those have already come in. Um, they are giving away 800 tree seedlings uh, and uh, 800 or two of those, 200 of those have already, already been given away. So that's most of what he had to say. Um, are, the, are the trees they're giving away in response to the calorie pair removal? No, just generally the the city's, uh, I guess the parks department is just giving away trees. Um, they usually do for Arbor Day. Oh, yeah. 
and but in various other mm -hmm. contexts as well. Um, oh, there are two or three short, uh, they're, they're short two or three members of the Tree Commission. So if anybody wants to also join the Tree Commission, you're welcome to do that or sign up for it anyway. And, um, yeah, so that's the Tree Commission report. ERAC was supposed to meet a week ago Wednesday, which was one of those very stormy days and they were going to meet outside and they canceled that meeting. Um, Francis Lake Monroe Science Committee was canceled because of some illness. And so those are my reports. Well, thank you for the update on that. Can you have a, a guest present both uh, a guest for the VCO one and a guest for the County Environmental Commission? Oh, because the chair is in the room. Oh, um, from two yeah. of the commissions that were getting reports. Um, oh, oh, I hear you saying. I was asking them if, if we would be able to let them share <laughs> present. I hear what you're saying. I was saying that because I did not make it to the B Coast meeting. Mm -hmm. if, if you're willing. Well, I'm not the chair because of the chair. Oh, yes. see, it's C. I'm commission on ah, it. Sorry about that. We did not have a meeting with us. We did not have a quorum. Um, Thank you for the update. <laughs> 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 I'm going to take her. Yes. Well, excellent. Okay. All right. Well, excited to hear what's coming up next for the Coast next time we meet. Um, and my understanding is that the also has some vacancies as well. So spread the word to your friends and loved ones. There's opportunity there too. Um, okay. Well, um, MC Iris is next on the list. Yeah. Uh, no real updates. Um, um, basically, they're still working on logistics of the um, plant sale in September. Oh, did I email you? You did. I don't think I responded, but the form is open. I'm filling it out right now. Yes, so they uh, want to get the yard. Yes, uh, that's right. For invasive species. They had stopped it for a while because they had so many last year, they couldn't get them all done. And they finished those um, the, uh, few left over from last year. And so if you want to get your yard evaluated for invasive plants, you can sign up on the list and they'll come to your yard and show, your, show you your invasive plants. And that is a great tool for when we're at Grandview talking to people about how they can get involved in the habitat activity plan. Uh -huh. They can identify what, what their uh, what their invasives mm -hmm. are and get rid of those. Um, is that on the what? Don't you guys have a website? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a very nice website. It's, 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 it's really, really nice. nice. It's, a, it's a good. It would be a good uh, model. resource for. Oh, and one hundred percent. It is online. Yeah, it is on the Brain Rolodex. We we'll have a lot of really good info on all the potential invasives. Very well, man. Awesome. Well, great. Well, thanks for the update there. Um, and then we've got the MPO CAC, which I don't believe we have anybody attending that. And then the uh, county meeting. I know that I think Megan, you mentioned you. Oh, we have a representative. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi. Uh, so some of you know me. Um, I'm Andrew Dunker. I previously served on the county and the city environment for three years. Now over at the county. Um, our meetings do overlap by about an hour, but I realize we can stop here and attach a report time. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping to do that as often as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so today we are looking, today we are, uh, we assess uh, county budget cycle coming up in the fall. Um, we're meeting with department heads to look at environmental projects that we can work on into the line items on the budget. Um, currently planning on planning. Um, as well as uh, the departments that handle a lot of drainage and stormwater issues. It's kind of helpful with that in the rural area of the town. Um, we also are looking at solar conversion projects. Um, they have a, the county has a bond to convert um, county facilities to solar energy. Um, we're looking at projects they've already uh, passed uh, several hundred thousand um, in solar fitting uh parking areas so like how the city has the parking area with the solar panels on top the county will have several of those in the coming years 
um, as well as uh, some uh, of our more rural buildings uh, out there for solar. Um, we also are looking at a new drainage ordinance um, for the county. We're working with planning on that to try and figure out ways to alleviate stormwater drainage and flooding issues in the rural parts of the county, um, which is proving cost prohibitive. Um, but we're looking at federal grants from the IRA and things like that that we've already been working on applying for us. Um, our ERI Resilience Fellow has been working on a county resilience climate action plan. Um, that is nearly complete. We're hoping to have that closed on through by November. Um, the problem is, is we are dropping our ERI fellow and the King fellow program um, due to lack of staffing oversight. There's no one to manage the intern. No one's do it. No one's able to do it. So far, it's been managed by Councilor Iverson, um, but he has a full time job and he's on county council. So he no longer has time to manage the uh, employee. So we're looking at options for that as well. Uh, my proposal is that the county work into the county plan budget, um, a senior environmental plan position, um, sort of like the city has, um, so we can consolidate a lot of the environmental programs under that individual and have them work as our way on uh, for county staff. Um, so figure your thoughts on that. <laughs> um, we are also, the environmental commission is going to approve the resiliency plan. Um, we'll probably get it. Well, I should say we will we'll vote on it we'll um, probably sometime this summer or early fall. Uh, project 46, working the, the commissioner to see if we can find a reasonable cooperative plan to work with the city on project 46, which is a solar conversion or a greenhouse, regional greenhouse gas emissions um, plan and uh, tracking for the region. Um, they're currently working with Columbus and Nashville on this, and they want the county to join. We're working on um, just getting more information and trying to follow some concerns for commissioners that. Um, we passed a resolution in support of the G National Wilderness Area Senate Bill, Senate Bill 2990. So that will be sent to the commission machine for extended support via resolution as well. And our resolution will also go to Congress. Um, and I think that's mostly it for what we're doing right now with our phase and more classes. Sounds great. Oh, very fantastic. Thanks for that. That was uh, definitely lovely. No, that was great. And I know that, um, yeah, the, that our our commission has definitely had a lot of conversations where we know that there's potential overlap and potential collaboration has kind of been had up to the county level. So. Yeah, is there anything, well, I guess you just got here and kind of just catching the, the last bit of it, but is there anything that when you're thinking about the city environmental commission that is on your radar as far as areas that would make sense for us to try and support what you're doing or weigh in on things or share our you know experiences with there or resources that we have, anything like that that is on your radar? So a lot of stuff we were thinking of collaborating with the city on has been set back by the mayoral administration, not by their decisions, but just by the fact that it takes a while to come into a new administrative to make things up and running. Um, so at Project 46, for example, uh, Mayor Hamilton wanted us to get that all approved and done by the end of his term. It did not. And now it's being reconsidered um, and pushed back a bit. Um, they already got funding from the city on that, for example, but they're working on um, the exact plans for it, and the mayor is not keen on jumping head first without doing something. Mm -hmm. you know, so, we're waiting on a lot of that um, and working with Shania on that specifically. Um, and then the other thing that's not really part of our agenda today, but I will be um, also appointed on Wednesday as the county representative to the coast. Um, mm -hmm. So, I'll be there as well, uh, which will help. Hopefully, I want to help get some. Collaboration going between the city and county via that. Um, but the EC is, is looking at a lot of budgetary things this year. There's, there's a lot of initiatives that they want to kind of see. They just go, well, we have no one to do it. We don't have money. Well, we just kind of that. <laughs> see if we can push some money for this. So I'll keep you updated on all that as well. Um, and then along with any uh, meetings we have in the future that may interest you, I'll either, you're always invited. 
Um, but I'll also send it to support me. Yeah. Well, thanks. Any questions for Andrew while we've we got in here? Great. Well, thank you for the update. That was really thorough and I'm glad we were able to. Yeah, you're able to join us for a little spell. I walked past and said, oh, there's the monkey. That was perfect. Well, great. Okay, well, that that then uh, wraps up our um, uh, updates from the various committees and commissions. Uh, it's 7-12 right now, which means we are nearing the end times. But uh, before we do that, we've got our opportunity for commissioner announcements. And this is basically kind of just an open opportunity to share whatever you'd like it's typically something that would make sense to share with the ec either because of what brings us all here which is the you know environmental status of our city but also sometimes just like professional opportunities personal updates things that are interesting jokes and songs we do like <laughs> so um happy to have both and it's just kind of a you can chime in if you have anything but you don't need to share if you don't have anything to share um but it's really an open open opportunity um yeah so i guess i'm just gonna put it out there anybody want to Update the good thing. Um, I so I'm the branch leader of the American Conservation Coalition chapter at Indiana University. Um, and the ACC is a nationwide nonprofit that just aims to get people involved in the environment. Um, and so there is a nationwide cleanup uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, so branches across the country are going to be picking up trash um, in honor of Earth Day. And uh, the Indiana University branch is doing that at 10 a.m. Uh, we're going to meet at the sample gates and then just kind of go from there. So, that sounds interesting. Do people need to bring anything? Like, do they need to bring their own buckets or gloves or no, wrappers or anything? All of the materials are provided by ACC, and we're actually providing food. So, you buried the lead on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, great. Okay. And you said that was, did you say Saturday? Uh, Sunday. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sunday at 10 at sample gates. Perfect. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, should we, oh, I was going to say, should we choose to redo the interactive map for the habitat connectivity plan? We have a former member in Sam Armstrong that we could possibly reach out to and see if we if we can't get some support from, as he is um, a GIS professional. Sure. Gotcha. I'll bug him. Gotcha. I was also considering that might be another. They have to bug my colleagues in the Jacksonville yeah, department. Or is that if you can throw some undergrads at it or something? And let Mitchell go first time uh, before we go. <laughs> um, it could be a great class project. We <laughs> really run out of GIS. Okay. Have some project thing like that. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I was going to say, uh, one of the, we've talked a lot about the biodiversity working group and the other working groups we have going right now is a water quality working group that I've been heading and revived last year. Um, big project we're trying to work on right now is kind of uh, cataloging and identifying all of the like water quality data and monitoring efforts and everything going on throughout the city and that has happened in the city in the past however long I can find data for. Um, usually meet monthly-ish, didn't meet in April because April kind of snuck up on me. Um, but we'll probably meet again in May, usually meet the first Thursday of the month at whatever we might be looking at the library, you know, I remember to look it. Um, but yeah, we found some, a lot of stuff from items so far. I know most recently, the most recent update is I don't have all the Fuji Room data that's been uploaded, which may not be looked at. I did, I realized I haven't responded. It's okay. definitely not up to date. Okay, that's my thought. I have personally <laughs> submitted several reports since the last year. That's right. I okay. <laughs> specifically did not see the site that you told me to yeah. work on on the list, and I was like, that doesn't seem. <laughs> so, uh, this is also an opportunity to identify the holes like that in the system yeah. possibly exist and how we can rectify them. Um, so, yeah, if you like water, shoot uh, <laughs> me an email and I'll put you on the list. I have a couple things. Um, can I jump in before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you can jump in. Okay, I'll jump in and then you can come up. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to take more of a conversation for this. Um, I was just going to mention that iNaturalist has um, a competition that they're doing. It's like a national competition, but Indiana specifically has an opportunity. And within the different cities in Indiana, they're trying to encourage people. It's basically 
um, a biodiversity tracking challenge. And it's something that anybody can do on the iNaturalist website. Um, it's the for Indiana, it's Indiana City Nature Challenge 2024. And it's basically an opportunity for regular people, families, schools, whomever, to map and, and track the just diversity of species that they can observe. It's really a citizen science scientist um, opportunity. So in thinking about what we talk about with when we're tabling and things like that, um, I think it could be a cool opportunity, but you should also look into it. It's just like a fun, I mean, it's meant to be a competition and right now Bloomington doesn't have anybody representing it. So I feel like that's um, uh, something that'd be a little bit fun, but I can forward you all the link to it because I think it sounds cool and a little nerdy, but yeah. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay, Linda, the floor is yours. Um, well, first I want to say uh, that tonight is Alana's last meeting. Well, she is graduating in May, <laughs> and we will no, no longer have her uh, esteemed presence and fantastic work. And I just want to say how much I appreciate all that you've done. You've done a great job. And, you know, we, I've given her some things to do. You guys have given her some things to do, and she just runs with it and gets it all done and um uh, she comes to me very little and she has everything all done read my mind and she's done a great <laughs> job and she has a job coming up in chicago like just a couple of days after graduation she will be working for the epa your excellent work Thank you guys. It's been a, a great time, 15 years, and we're really fast. So, thank you all. Learned a lot from every single one of you. <laughs> Mostly Linda, because she's awesome. But. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that. Yes. And the other thing I want to announce is that next month, the May's meeting will be my last will be my last meeting here because I'm very tired. <laughs> so um, it's been a long, hard decision, and I'm actually finally excited about it, but <laughs> really not too much. Um, <laughs> um, but my last day will be May 24th. I don't even know how the ACPC looks okay. Um Well, uh, I talked about that with my manager, and we need to see. So that's that's my announcement. Is there a new senior environmental plan? No, not yet. Mm -hmm. And there probably won't be until after I leave. And so, you know, and, and then another difficult another difficulty is that um, department man the department head, the director, is brand new. I, I've only met him twice. Mm -hmm. So he has no idea what I do or what you guys do. We had a, a meeting a couple of days ago, and I told him a lot about, about the EC. Um, but um, so that's going to be a little bit different. Um, I don't know who's going to be filling in or how or anything. So it's probably going to be a big, um, you know, a time when nobody knows what's going on. Um, but you can always call me. I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not, you know, moving to any retirement community or anything like that. So how long have you been with the EC? Uh, 22 years. I don't know how we're going to do it without you. I know that every single one of us has just been in awe of how much you keep in your head and how much you have in your heart and how you've been just a pillar to this group. So it is... Thank you. It is unimaginable that we will not have Linda sitting in this chair every month, but it's just been an absolute honor to have you help us through and keep our initiatives going and do that steady force for us. For sure. It's, it's been my pleasure. And my honor. I feel like we should applaud it. Thank you. Anybody else has any more announcements to follow them? Yeah, <laughs> I knew that was coming, so <laughs> uh, we will we'll figure out a way to properly properly send you off. Uh, excellent, <laughs> excellent. But yeah, you know, after working my whole life and finally coming to terms with retirement, I'm good with the party. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that that is definitely. <laughs> <sighs>
Oh, we knew this day was coming too. We knew at some point you were going to retire, and I just kept begging you every single <laughs> month. And, you said, no. and then what have you responded with? <laughs> wow. All right. Well, I know it's a lot to take in as our closing closing announcement. Is there anything else that anybody wants to share? That's a hard act to follow. Hard act to follow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Motion. Okay. We adjourn. All right, for a second. Second. Thank you. Okay, it's 7.22 and we're wrapping up second to last meeting for Linda, last meeting for Alana. Thank you all so much. This is stellar brilliant.